Um, if you're listening to Fighting is About Fighting 2, we're going to go right into Dillashaw versus Garbrandt. And if you're not, then I'm going to start right now. All right. This, <laughs> how about that? This is a short analysis piece, a first analysis piece on Dillashaw versus Garbrandt 2. The week of the fight, we will hope to do another. And when I say hope, man, we are busy and traveling and doing a lot of things. So hopefully we can. Uh, TJ Dillashaw and Cody Garbrandt are two of the very, very best bantamweights ever. Two of the very best fighters ever. And partic And I'm going to say this, and I mean no disrespect to Cody Garbrandt, former champion, when I say this. I, I mean particularly TJ Dillashaw. Now, what do I mean and why did I say that? And, and sorry, Cody, I, I, give me a chance to not like have this come out the wrong way. When it comes to just technical expression of, con of fighting concepts, TJ Dillashaw is on a different plane. But Cody Garbrandt, in what is still evolving and growing and can beat TJ Dillashaw, he can and might, uh, but he's also the raw materials of what he is, to me, has m even potentially more potential. What he could become is even more special. Um, and that's frightening because uh, his bantamweight champion. Do you see what he did to our guy, Dominic Cruz? Do you see, you see what the fuck that guy did to Dominic Cruz? Ain't nobody done that. Nobody. Nobody done that. And uh, he might do that to TJ. He might. You know, the biggest issue with the, the game of, you know, whether we are making prognostications or predictions or even analysis. And the reason I bring this up is because I want to find a cure to this, but I don't have it yet, is that we talk about things as if they are fixed. And whatever we're talking about with these two guys, they are both so much better than every piece of footage that we can see. Now, the only real answer to this, and I don't, the answer to this is to go in and spend time and sometimes a lot of time, weeks, uh, days for sure, uh, in the gyms and see their, their evolution and see them prepping for fights. Now, that is the answer to the problem of we can't analyze them because we don't really know what they are. We only know what they were. So that's the answer. But a new problem arises. How the fuck do we make a living doing that? <laughs> How do we pay for that? How do we facilitate this? So I don't have that answer. I don't have that answer yet. Maybe there is some sponsorship, something in the world that would benefit by us going and doing that. You know, maybe if we wore Roots of Fight, and I know my friends at Roots of Fight, this, they don't have budgets for this, so I'm just using them as an example because I like them and I like their clothes. And actually, don't tell anybody, don't tell my producer at TSN, but he really wants a Sugar Ray Leonard shirt. They have new cool Sugar Ray Leonard shirts, so Roots of Fight, Hook me up with a medium for my guy, okay? Or large, I don't know, maybe large. Um, Mark likes him too. Um, but maybe there's some company, maybe there's someone somewhere that is like, hey, look, we will benefit, because people gotta benefit or else they won't do something. They will benefit by sending us in to do this research. That research will allow us to really say what they are. We can't do that. So what can we do? What can we do? We can extrapolate where they were going before. Cody was becoming even more. So Cody is a, is a racehorse, right? He's a thoroughbred. He accelerates. He becomes stronger. He becomes faster. He's got a crazy focus. He sees things well. He's got strong attributes. He's sharp. He works really hard. He moves his feet really well. He gets better at things. He's comfortable in the chaos of what fighting is. He's comfortable in seeing the lines in which things are happening. And he does it quite instinctively and intuitively. So, and I obviously worked insane, insanely hard since he was a child. And he's quite young still. But the hard work mixed with the attributes is growing the attributes and it's growing that natural feel of these things. And that, the potential of where that can go is really terrifying. Beautiful. Um, TJ and Dwayne and, and, you know, TJ is training a lot with Cub Swanson, which that honestly, and I know I'm, I'm a complete mark for Cub Swanson. So my view will be 
shaped by that. But that's a real good training partner to, to have when you're fighting, you know, Cody Garbrandt, man. Cub moves in, in ways like that. He's got that feel and that flow, you know. He, um, maybe doesn't bite down quite as hard on his mouthpiece. And at his best, he is more relaxed than that. But he's a good training partner to have. But, but uh, Dwayne or TJ is more of a, you know, an executor. He can run plays. So that, to me, is what's interesting about this fight. And it's one guy is executing concepts, brilliant concepts, brilliant ideas, math, physics. And the other guy is trying to float, flow, and feel his way into it. And which one is better? I don't know that there is a better. And ultimately, both kind of feed each other because the way that you program T.J. Dillashaw with math and science and lines and numbers and plays, you create through, and we, something we talked about earlier today, you create actual neural pathways in the brain, which is why then later they feel it and they just express it. They're not, they're not, they're not doing math. They're not going one to two to pivot to step to rhythm. They're just doing. And so ultimately you end up with a similar machine by moving in two different ways. So it's really fascinating. It's really, really fascinating. You know, there's so much going on here. And the, the root of what's going on, you know, we see the flaws and how we want to compare them. Well, who's got better striking or who's got harder punches or who kicks better? Is it really any of those things? Is it? Is it really, you know, because the kick that landed, TJ landed a kick or it, so Cody to, uh, dropped him at the end of round one. And TJ will land that kick. I can't remember if he landed it in round two, or, but he will set up that kick and land it from all these different places in ways that are so spectacular. Uh, is it as hard as the guy who kicks the, the uh, baseball bat in half when the, the tie guys hold the baseball bat and they kick it? Yeah. <laughs> I've seen others do it too, but, but um, no. But it's going to be hard enough. And, you know, and... Fuck, man, I, I really like watching Dwayne's work. I really like watching where his brain is going to. And it's hard you, you, to keep up is part of what makes you good at your job. Trying to keep up. I don't have to keep up to do what he does. I just have to keep up to understand what it is, what he's, as best I can, and what is we're trying to accomplish. And um, But there are some really cool concepts at play. And Cody, through hard work, continuous hard work, ends up kind of creating a similar kind of creature, a similar kind of machine. You know what I mean? These guys are lessons in how to build the perfect fighter. There's not only one way. But ultimately, in five or ten years, someone will come in here and, and or they'll take the best of these things from, Dwayne has a specialized line of thinking, and Cody has trained in multiple different ways, and they'll put all of these things together and understand. But when... I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna really spend some time to try to figure out another perspective to add, because, yeah, they move on. Cr they have crazy footwork, you know. They put together in unpredictable combinations. They use things that you believe you know about them against you. Those are all things that are always there in fighting. But what else is happening here, you know? I'm going to spend some time thinking about it. I'm hoping we can come back to this fight before, you know, after um, we're done here in Calgary. I'm going to Edmonton for two days to see some family, and then I'm taking a couple of days out of Toronto. And then when I get back, I'm going right into TSN to uh, cover this fight. So I'm hoping we can get another thing, especially I'm going to give Dwayne a call. I'm going to – Dwayne, if – somebody happened to mention to you about this piece, which, to be honest, I'm thinking out loud, which is what I love to do. I don't think I've revealed anything new here. I don't think I've really, other than, you know, we're talking about what we could think about, and we're exploring who these guys are and why they are. I regret to say that I haven't offered anything up that furthers this conversation. I hope I've made you think, because I don't, I hate the idea that I could have wasted your time. But, uh, 
but you look at what these guys are and how they are, and the big question is not who's got better footwork or who's got better head movement or who's got better power. I don't think that's the conversation. I don't think that's the question. I think the question is what different, these are different animals. These are different martial artists than we've seen. So what are the true perspectives that we can use to learn something from them or to get excited about it or to, to give it some different thought or to go down a neat rabbit hole and explore it? That's the question. The question is, what are the right questions? And they're not the typical ones. So anyways, if Dwayne, if somebody has mentioned to you that, that, I'm, that uh, we're talking about this, I'm going to give you a text that I'm going to reach out and, and hope to even just pick your brain a little. I'm not going to ask for any secrets and you're not going to give any. But uh, if you would just offer up some of the, the different broad concepts that you're working on, that'll lead me to some deeper investigation, which I will really appreciate. I hope you guys have got something from, from the, the looking at what we're doing here is pretty meta. We're looking at how to look at this. And I know that that's a, a different perspective, but it's not easy. We spend a lot of time saying what fighting isn't necessarily and where our weaknesses are with the language. It requires real hard work to figure out how to, how to solve that. And we're going to try to do that work.